Ed, how you doing over there? Just airing down? I aired down, but I'm gonna chain up. I just wanna see how this thing's gonna perform. Reach around. And right now, I'm looking at a very powerful mid-latitude cyclone, also known as a bomb cyclone, about to slam into Southern California. So what exactly makes this such a major weather event? Well, a couple of reasons. Uh, it is, first off, this system of some very cold air that's drifted down from the North Pole. But also, in addition to this, what is uh, really adding to that moisture content is a subtropical jet. This is what's called the Pineapple Express. It is really, just think of this as moving along that cyclone closer to Southern California, pushing it uh, towards our area. If we look closer to this, you can see a really well-developed eye wall around the center of low pressure typically we get those so by the way these are not the most heavy duty chains they are a chain they're not a they're not a cable but as you can see they're not like these giant beefy chains but they should probably do the trick still <coughs> So I've asked this question before, why don't more overlanders and off-roaders use snow chains on their winter adventures? Across the board on social media and YouTube, snow chains aren't being used and adventurers are getting stuck. Some people will use traction boards to maybe free them for a quick moment and then they get stuck again. Some people have these large mud terrain tires that are really knobby, made of a soft compound so they don't freeze over, and they're unstoppable in snow. But there's many that can't mount these gigantic tires. So this is my third video about this topic. But this time around, I mount the chains early, and having chains on all four tires is one of the reasons our three-vehicle convoy made it out alive. We survived one of the many atmospheric river storms in California, 2023. My friend Jaquan52 and I like to go snowboarding, and we'll use the activity of overlanding so that we can camp out near the resort and get multiple days in. So just know that we don't have a death wish. We have legitimate motivation to camp out in the snow. And we have enough common sense to drive down to lower elevations to avoid really crazy storms like this bomb cyclone. So this four-night, four-day snow adventure starts when we met our friend Ed Z after a day of snowboarding. Good to see you. And here we got John Kwan. Shredder. <laughs> and we're about to drive up into the mountains. Look at all the snow. It's gonna this is gonna be a challenge. <laughs> so I think uh Ed's gonna be uh on plow duty. <laughs> up to the challenge. Alright, cool. I'll be in the rear. <laughs> <laughs> There is an opening. I think we might need to get Ed up front. All right, John, your turn. You need to get in front of me too.
I'll drive up more so you can get a better running start. <clears throat> Send it. Capability. So right. I'm at <laughs> I'm at 40 psi, not air down. This is all the Falcon Wall Peaks, and someone was so kind enough to kind of plow this trail for us, already, right? <laughs> I wonder who drove through here. Whoever it was, thank you so much. Such a contribution to the overlanding community. And ski bums alike. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't have a winch. I can't pull him out. I'm still at 40 PSI. I probably should air down. We well, all should probably air down. <laughs> uh, it looks like we're okay. <laughs> John's plowing. See what kind of snow this is. Ooh, powder. And it's a little crunchy at the bottom. Ed, how you doing over there? Just airing down? You know, we'll probably just set up camp here because there's no more tracks. We could just uh, kind of widen the path a little bit and then we just yeah, camp just out here. Down and make it all wider here. Yeah, yeah. We'll widen the track. It's, it, it, it's a really wide track. It goes from here all the way over there. You literally could get like five cars abreast all right so uh i mean i aired down but i'm gonna chain up just want to see how this thing's gonna perform air down the thing about chaining up when you're in snow is that you need to clear out the tires so i'm having to bust out the shovel and clear away the snow. This is why it's going to be more convenient if you just chain up at the trailhead where it's nice and flat and clear. I found out that it's easier if you just kind of drive forward and back and just kind of shimmy over to the left and right to clear the snow, to compact the snow so that you could install the chains easier. So, the ch you know how like, when people put their tongue on a metal pole? That's kind of what's happening with my hands. And uh, she always goes, hey, John, once I'm chained up, I should be able to pull you out. Uh, I'm getting winched out. Oh, nice. Just a little bit. All right, cool. I'm so stubborn, I'm not putting on any gloves. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, that's not good. I need some gloves. <coughs> I'm put those. So I don't make overlanding content because I think I'm some kind of expert. I'm part of the community and I make these videos to contribute to the community and the knowledge base. So there's a comment left on my channel by Aaron Barker. And um, this is something that I wasn't that I observed, but I wasn't totally familiar with. I 
never broke it down scientifically, but he's right. Steel sticks to ice and snow. It sticks to my really cold, wet fingers. Rubber doesn't grip ice. I could place my cold, wet hand on my tire and my hand is not going to get stuck to my tire. <coughs> All right, you're hooked up. That wasn't that hard. That wasn't quick, but then I wasn't actually trying to hustle. All right, now we gotta see uh, how the Honda does. If I'm able to plow around and uh, this thing's unstoppable now because I chained up. I only chained up at the rear though. It would work a lot better if I was chained up in the uh, in the front as well. So now let's take another look at Aaron Barker's YouTube comment. All right, so here, my front and rear tires are rotating at the same rate, and now they're not. It's because that rubber has heated up the snow, and now there's no traction. There's also another reason why the front is spinning faster than the rear, and that's because with an all-wheel drive system, you just have a clutch pack that operates the power transfer from front to back and clutch packs when they reach their limit will slip and that's what's happening here but this does illustrate how much more traction chains will give you compared to just a bare three peak snow rated falcon wall peak at3w tire that's aired down to 20 psi the snow tire chains are way grippier and i'm going to read aaron barker's comment word for word Snow is ice. Rubber edges don't grip ice well. Steel edges do. If it's cold enough, the snow stays frozen when you spin. If it isn't, the spinning rubber polishes the snow and melts it into a skating rink. Spinning steel digs into the ice and keeps it from polishing. And then he goes on to talk about that chains could break and damage vital vehicle parts like your brake lines and other suspension components. I talk about that in my first two videos. Whoa. Holy high centered Batman. <laughs> I, I think we were thinking about just camping out right, right here. Right up here, John. I already got it all flattened out. Nice. Let's do I it. I mean, we're in the middle of the trail, but no one's going to be coming down. No, no. Especially like past us because there's no trail out there. Yeah. Uh oh. There it goes. My friend Ed Z has a Jeep Wrangler JK Rubicon that is triple locked. Well, you know, that that's a transfer case, which counts as that center rotational lock. Front to back, side to side, diagonal to diagonal. It's all locked in rotation. Clutch packs and all wheel drives will appropriate power. But differential locks and four-wheel drive will block rotation. For severe conditions like this, it's good to have a friend like Ed Z. His Jeep has the most ground clearance out of our three vehicles, which means he's not going to get high centered as easily. His vehicle also has a winch, which, just like snow chains, is another tool to help you get through terrain like this. Can you radio in the head? Like, hey, can you winch me out? <laughs> can you uh, winch John out, Ed?
another doorway to open up and see what kind of lifeline will be waiting there for me I need to bury all these fears and let them fade away I'm not scared I'm prepared to find myself someone else coming. Hey, hey, is that, are those your friends over there? No. Okay, well they need help. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. You guys see it too? You're just camping out here. Oh no, we snowboarded today. Oh really? We did yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, it was a good day. It was a, it was a really nice day. It was a good cool. day. Yes sir. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. Yeah. excited. Just a little push now. Here, I'll help. Let's get, let's, let's get eight dudes and we'll just push. So I was just talking to Ed about the storm. The storm. So this is going to be the biggest storm in 10 De years. Decade storm. And it's going to be the biggest storm ever. Yeah, it's going to be a river of rain coming in. Uh-oh. Okay, Ed. Well, okay. let's get out of here then. Okay. It was projected that three to five feet would drop overnight. So we made sure we got out of this camping area. The warning was heeded. Not today, Mother Nature. We will not turn into human popsicles. At the time, I didn't know who owned that red Jeep with the Ursa Minor Pop Top Tent. That is Kramer Junction, a fellow YouTube channel. I was admiring that Jeep so much that I literally fell on my butt trying to set up the shot. My IVTM4 and ZF9 equipped Honda Passport has a three and a half inch Traxa lift kit. This plays a big part 
and being able to drive through snow because as you were able to see earlier once you high center there's a high chance you're getting stuck there's a lot more modifications that make my vehicle more off-road capable but at the same time all this heavy overlanding gear makes my vehicle less balanced and less capable so i made my way back over to the ski resort to meet up with john we did some runs and then we drove 40 miles south down the mountain to the town of bishop california the difference in elevation is night and day so we're now over in bishop at the pleasure pit anyways i know some of you were concerned about the storm john and i we actually dropped down to bishop gonna catch fire right now. <laughs> it's all right. It'll be fun. <laughs> oh, it's like a wooden fork, huh? Yeah. Check that out. <laughs> all right, so uh, we just got a text message from Josh, Joshua Crook. He's uh, the lead of SoCal 4 Low, and he's telling me Kramer Junction is stuck with his uh, red Jeep. He was our neighbor on our first night of camping. I didn't realize that was him. I watched a few of his videos. Right now, though, there's a crazy storm in Mammoth, but if a dude needs help, you know, we're here. <clears throat> we heard that the highway leading up to Mammoth, California was closed, so we find an alternate route through the volcanic tablelands. Well, like the saying goes, if you don't fuck around, you'll never find out. That's the, that's the saying? <laughs> that is the saying. <laughs> Did you see those animal tracks? Oh damn, deer's going crazy. <laughs> With about 22 miles driven down this trail, according to Gaia, we just had about five miles to go. The snow started getting deeper, so we chose to pull over to air down even more, and I decided I would chain up on all four tires. He's good, he's backing up now. Or I could put I could put chain the chains on. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, John. Hold on, hold on. Wait. Look at all that magnificent grip. No excessive spinning. No extra spinning. It is great. It's awesome to see. Chains are real sticky. Oh, Benson Crossing is only five miles. Nice. Get the chains are fine. 
on, John. Hold on. Okay, I see her. Awesome. Good job, Carla. <laughs> yeah, I see you. Heck yeah. Good job. gonna take a little break here Carla oh are you stuck wait hold on we could probably push you stop stop uh, stop we'll be right there all right let's see how accessible I have my recovery gear okay Got right here all right cool a few times This is one of the few shots you're gonna see my snow chains, or at least all four of them. And it just shows how much grip there is. Also, just a reminder that I'm using light duty chains. These are for SUVs and light trucks. Nothing heavy duty, and it's helping so much. Just a heads up, we're gonna be going into deeper snow. And this time around, we don't have Ed Z's Jeep Rubicon that's lifted, 35 inch tires, winch. We don't have his capable rig to help us out. And now we have a bone stock Subaru Ascent that has 8.7 inches of minimum ground clearance and about 9.5 to 10 inches of maximum clearance. Did you just buy this, Carla? <laughs> Did you buy this, uh, recover, uh, this soft shackle? Yeah. Nice. Okay, so it's pretty obvious we don't have the most capable rigs to drive through this deep snow, especially later on, it's gonna get a lot deeper. I'm already anticipating a lot of mean and negative comments, but I'm okay with that because I know the majority of those watching will see this as kind of a warning about how difficult deep snow could be to traverse. And you're gonna see technique, strategy, and good attitude that's gonna help us get through this difficult terrain. We're gonna be coming across four foot snow drifts. So stay tuned, keep watching. This is gonna get good. So this will be a little test. Carlo's gonna to try to drive forward. Oh. Oh, huh. Yeah, we'll just disconnect you. We'll leave your uh, soft shackle on. Yeah. yeah. But I'll just disconnect mine. So even though my chains provide a lot of grip, my vehicle has become high centered on what looks like hard packed snow. Crazy high centered. And this is why I am not able to continue. Because of that right there, that down there. This is not a recovery point, this is a tow point. So it's gonna be a soft pull. Do not do hard pulls with Toe points, bad idea. Not a rated recovery point and I'm totally blinder. You know what, I'm really high standard. Why don't you just give me a quick like little bump? Nothing crazy, just a quick okay. bump. About to go in three, two, one. A little more, a little, another bump. Back up about like five feet. <laughs> and then once you do. We'll just go, go all the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, can you disconnect? Yeah.
For those that might not be familiar with what they're seeing, what's happening is Carla's CPU ascent is high centering. It's plowing. That front bumper is going to be one of the higher points of the underbody. So the bottom is dragging. My kinetic rope is 20 feet. There were a lot of close calls, so I would recommend a longer kinetic rope. At least 30, 40, or 50 might be better. John's Lexus GX470, aka a Land Cruiser Prado, is coming in clutch, plowing the road for us. I see that road to the right here. It looks uphill. <laughs> <laughs> oh darn, dude, we are so freaking close to bending across the road, though. <laughs> well, I know we're not going to turn around. That 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 would just be crazy. But uh, just know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Hey, John, uh, what did you air down to, by the way? <clears throat> like 14 or something. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. It looks like you almost got it. Wiggle your uh, wheels, like, left and right. All right, I'll come tug you then. <laughs> All right, Carla, we're going to go up a little bit. John won't need much of a tug. <laughs> <laughs> I could barely open my door. All right, Carla, so we're gonna have to, we're like triple connected right now, so I'm gonna tension back. So you, you'll need to back up a little bit. It's 435. All right, John, you ready? Here we go. Four now, ready? All right, John's free. We drove through all that, all this. We started way down here, way down here, like right there. Okay, we made our, all, our, our way all the way up and we are right here. We're just trying to get to this gray highway. I, I mark my highways in gray. Oh, nice, John's up, John's up. I missed it, <laughs> should have been paying attention. <laughs> nice, all right, here we go, Carla. <laughs> Wait one second, I gotta, uh, I'm kinda stuck here on the left. Uh oh John, we might be stuck here. <laughs> Damn it, you just made it, you just like did such great work. 
Um, wait. Back. No. I'm kind of stuck here. So this is where we do a lot of digging. And I was able to break myself free a little bit after digging. And then um, just the way I was pulling Carla's Subaru, we made it just a little further and then we got really stuck. Now the entire passenger side has snow in front of it. 15 minutes have passed by. You could see day turning into night. And so someone commented on my YouTube videos, the snow changes as the day progresses, the day turns into night, things start icing over. And I completely agree. That's exactly what was happening. The snow was getting crunchy and this was turning into a worse situation. Our Lexus GX was able to reverse back down to us. And that's where we strapped up all of our vehicles. We're going to do a double pull. Okay, go for it. It's going to be a pretty uh, rough pull here. All right, you ready, Carla? Let's go. Little progress. All right, everyone kind of back it up a little bit. Oh. Let me back it up to you, John. All right, okay. And then we need to just kind of stay over to the, uh, to the driver's side. Don't sink into the left side, I'm oh, to the right side. See that again. Wait up, John. Let me try to drive forward right here. I'm, there's a whole big hole right here. I, I think I'm that's what's stopping me. So wait, hold on uh, one second No, actually John can you drive forward because I'm stuck in a hole. I just need a I need a bump out of it Dang, okay. Well, let me pull you out then. Carla, are you able to back up? Do I have room to back up more? Uh, oh, now I'm in that hole. <laughs> I just I just went back into that hole. No, Carla's stuck, all right. Carla, go forward, go forward. We're about to go forward again. Okay, all right, let's do this. We're going forward. Here I go.
my seatbelt on. Shit. There. By the way, at the end is the campground, so that's where we'll stay tonight. Good, we're at the top of the hill right now. What do you think? We oh, fuck. Carla hit me. Uh, rear ended. Are you okay, Carla? Okay, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Uh, it was a it was a light hit. Hold on. Now it's all downhill, and we only have 300 feet to go. But I will tell you, it takes us about an hour to get out of this. This is one of the toughest parts of this ordeal. I'm gonna keep needing tug back. So this is a bad situation. The Lexus GX has been plowing ahead, and because of that, he has become stuck. Behind me is the Subaru Ascent, and she's not too far behind me, and she's stuck. So I'm the convoy's last hope. Right here, I'm moving around a little bit. I do have traction because of the chains, but right here, I nearly get stuck. And there you go, thank goodness. Seriously, fellow overlanders, mount chains, get yourself unstuck. Go too much forward, there's a big hole in front of you. John's kinetic rope is 30 feet long and I didn't have the space to pull him back because Carla's Subaru Ascent was in the way. So what we did was we halved the line. That now made it a 15 foot length. It's not moving. Okay. Carla. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, one second. I'm gonna, John. I'm gonna tug you back. Okay. Here we go. Three. Go reverse. Three, two, one. Well, here we go. Okay. How much room do I have? Turn your back. Oh, that's not much. <laughs> okay. See if I can go forward a little bit. All right, ten four. Okay, how much of a running start do you need? I'm probably gonna need more than this or else I'm just gonna get stuck again. Hey Carla? Yeah. How much space do we have? Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. I gotta tell you again, John. Alright, ready? Here we go. Ready? Back. Are you ready? Back. Yeah. I'm gonna tug you again, John. Gonna tug you again. Here we go.
here John wanted to be unhooked so he could go all out. And it looks like he got about yeah. 20 feet. To keep the time of this episode low, if I included everything, this would be a two hour episode. So I'm just going to have to speed things up. And there are things that I cut out. But anyways, all the towing back and recovering John has culminated into an epiphany. And that is, hey, don't go so hard. Just go a little bit right before you hit that snow drift, let off the gas. That way you have a chance to actually reverse out of there. And I'm going to be hooked up to you so that if you do get stuck, I'll be able to pull you out. Hey, John, let's do this, dude. Okay, from here, you just drive forward. The goal is to just hit it. Remember, hit it and don't hit it hard. Just hit it lightly so that you have the chance to back up. Yeah, yeah, so you're just, you're not gonna go far. Just hit it and like hit it light. Like when you hit it, like let off the gas and then just try to back up. We're gonna take it like three feet by three feet. It's better, it's faster than having to get out, unhook and do all that. Just so you get like, you know, 15 feet. Yep, yeah, just like that. You, you, but can you back up? Yeah, you can even back up yourself. Cool. All right, let me go forward. All right, go ahead. Probably just could stay there with the slack on the rope and then I'll just go little by little. Exactly. I'll go a little bit. Yeah, just go little by little. I'll pull you back. Looks like you have pretty good momentum downhill. I think you might you might have a good shot. We'll just keep doing what we're doing because this is working pretty good and it's faster. Hey, give me one second. I'm just going to change out the GoPro battery real quick. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> one second. And this is where it was downhill enough to where John was able to continue planned out. Snow is still really freaking deep. And this isn't even the bottom of it because there's a layer of sleet. I fell through and I almost sank down to my, my my abdomen, like on the lower part of my chest. Oh, this is awesome. So this was a crazy ordeal. 
but uh, we leave no one behind, and we are going to have to go back for Carla. It's just another doorway to open up and see What kind of lifeline will be waiting there for me I need to bury all these fears And let them fade away I'm not scared, I'm prepared To find myself Did you think you were gonna? Did you think you're gonna die? <laughs> nah, not really. I was thinking like, oh my god, when you guys left, like, shit, what if a bear comes? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I, I was like thinking about that. I was like, man, I hope she goes stays in her car because if a bear comes out, <laughs> they're gonna come back and they're gonna find me. <laughs> All right, so this was a good plan, right? We drove up and then we knew that we could turn around because I knew I chopped it up already. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much it. All right. All right, let's do it. Just pull down a little bit. Yeah. Make sure that I could turn around. Yeah. Uh, I should be able to. I'm gonna I'm gonna back up and then kind of use your tracks to uh, back down. All right, I'll be in the back. Obviously. Were you worried, John? Not worried. I knew I was gonna get out. Eventually, like, we would get out. He's like, it was just this a, is a pain How long? <laughs> We're snowboarding tomorrow. <laughs> I feel like this was a good warm up. I felt like this was a good exercise, man. <laughs> <laughs> think, uh, how many calories do you think we burned today <laughs> tonight <laughs> like 10,000 calories <laughs> uh, all right Woo! all right Carla we'll uh, take it nice and slow until we clear John's car <laughs> And then Carla, you might want to think, ooh, ooh, I want to think about that lift kit now. <laughs> yeah, lift kit would be good for the for the Subaru, because really it's, most of it had to do with um, the high centering. Look at that. My knee's steaming. I'm on fire! <laughs> Literally, my body's on. That looks crazy, huh? I'm just so warm right now. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty trippy. My body is steaming. No, I'm not on fire. I don't have a heat warmer. I guess it's just from all that. Shoveling. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. I think we I burned like we burned about ten thousand calories each. For sure. <laughs> we're, so now we're well, you guys now are we're a lot. now we're ready <laughs> to we're ready to munch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that pizza. That was excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all these chips. Carla has like the cool snacks because because uh, why? Because the kids <laughs> got to yeah. got to have the snacks. Hey, don't forget they want it for All right, well deserved meal. Heated up some ravioli oh, and cheese. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> what a this. what a trip. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That three car pulling was epic. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> three cars. <laughs>
<laughs> that was so awesome. <laughs> oh, it did it! It did it! Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wasn't that cool? The water droplet when it went that way it wasn't really like water. It was actually yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just turns into steam. That's like the science trick. So there you have it. That wasn't clickbait. Literally, those chains saved our convoy. Saved us from, well, we wouldn't have died. We were prepared for this. Obviously, we camped in the snow, um, but it did, it did get us to the end that night. I'm not sponsored by any snow chain company. Like I said, I've just been seeing a lot of overlanders getting stuck. I always wondered, why, why not use chains? And there you have it. There is proof. It's empirical. Snow chains can help you. They won't solve all your problems, but they're not going to hurt. They're going to give you the best chance possible. So might as well go use them. So anyways, stay safe. And I hope you have fun on your adventures. John DZ out. Oh, and don't walk barefoot in the snow. It's very painful. <laughs>